hello there. This short lane is called Colton Entry. It runs between Monker Street and Stevenson Street in the Colton area in the east end of Glasgow. Today it's part of the Barra's Market area uh, where at weekends you can pick up all manner of antiques and bric-a-brac and interesting bits and bobs. But it didn't always look like this. This photo dates to around 1910 and it shows a woman in a shawl standing beside a horse and cart in this lane and the cart has uh, creates a fish in the back and if you look at the, the cart it has a little image of a fish. She's selling fish. This is number one and what I hope will be a series of videos and I'm not sure if I can actually use the word video because this is all about black and white photographs or still images. There's not going to be any moving images in this series. And this um, number one deals with horses and carts. And although the horses and carts aren't always the main feature, if you look at the photo you will see them lurking somewhere in the background. Um, I'm Eddie Burns. Welcome to Old Photos of Scotland. Getting things up and running with an old photo of the Cowgate in Edinburgh. Dating to 1882, it shows George IV Bridge and tenements, all of which have gone. I'd love to visit that old pub on the left. You can just make out an advert for younger rails in the window. This photo is a little later, dating to around 1901. It shows a brewery horse and cart delivering barrels and bottles of beer to the Thistle Inn in Main Street, Camelon. Yet another old pub I'd love to have visited. As far as I'm aware, the building no longer exists. Late Victorian street scene in Musselburgh's High Street beside the 16th century town hall. And once again we see a horse and cart delivering bottles of something. 
maybe beer or aerated waters like lemonade. It's a scene that looks much the same these days, although the jumbly mishmash of buildings shown here is far more interesting than those that line the street today, simply down to their variety in shape and form. Not a great photo, but certainly an interesting one. This is one of a number of vehicular ferries that once ran across the River Clyde in Glasgow. This one ran between Stob Cross and Mavis Bank Quay, right where the Finnis and Crane stands today. The photo dates to around 1910 and shows the Finnis and Ferry approaching Mavis Bank Quay on the south side of the river. Apart from one car sneaking into the shot in the bottom right and a lorry up front, all the other vehicles are horses and carts, carrying all manner of goods in boxes and sacks. The chain mechanism that was used to pull this ferry across the river can still be seen today, although it has been moved upriver a hundred yards or so. Remaining in Glasgow, again around 1910, but this time in the east end of the city, in Carlton. The photo was taken in Carlton Entry, a lane that still exists today in what is termed the Barra's Market area, although it now looks very different. The woman shown is transporting and selling boxes of fish. the other side of the country now, in Edinburgh, and three formidable looking gentlemen walking along South Bridge around 1910. You wouldn't want to get in their way, would you? It's a street scene that looks just as busy as it is these days. The Tron Church with its clock tower and the two buildings with the triangular pediment on the left have survived. A very clear image of Glasgow Cross dating to the 1890s. You can see the building that was once attached to the Tollbooth steeple and the nearby statue of King William III, which has since been moved up the High Street near the cathedral. In the bottom left, construction is taking place to build Glasgow Cross railway station. With the exception of the Tollbooth steeple, all the buildings have gone. Remaining in Glasgow, this time in 1894, and a lovely old photo of a horse-drawn tram. This Glasgow Corporation tram was pulled from one end of the city to the other, between Ibrox and Parkhead. It must have been a good workout for those two horses. Electrification of the tram network started in 1897, and the last horse-drawn tram was in 1902. This photo has additional interest in that we can actually identify the conductor, who was Mr. James McCulloch of Springburn. In the old days, 
horses pulled all manner of vehicles, in this case a refuse cart belonging to Falkirk Town Council. The photo dates to around 1936 and was taken in Dorriter Road, Camelon. The verse or slogan on the cart reads, If your rates you would reduce, reduce the refuse you produce. photograph that has seen better days, but the scene that depicts is very interesting indeed. As I've already said, horses pulled all manner of things in the old days, and in this case they're pulling cars. Argyle motor cars heading for rail transport from their factory in Bridgeton in 1905. lovely street scene in Edinburgh around 1895. We're looking along North Bridge from its junction with Princes Street and all the buildings in shot have gone, replaced in 1902 by what was then the North British Hotel, now the Balmoral. It's a well-focused photo that shows a lot of detail and if we zoom in we can see all sorts of things from hairdressers to hatters. Remaining in Edinburgh with this very early photo of the grass market and the foot of West Bow, some of these early photographs, this one dates to 1856, can be very sharp and show lots of good detail. This one was clearly taken using a long exposure that sees ghost-like images here and there, but we can still see what once went on in these old, tall, tottery buildings. From left to right, we can see a victual dealer, or grocer, then what looks like a tavern selling spirits, porter and ales. Further along we have stables for the horses in the shot. And on the far right you can see the West Bow Well, built in 1674 and still standing today. While there have been some building losses and replacements over the years, some buildings have survived from this period, and today the scene looks much the same. Another early shot of Edinburgh's grass market, this time taken in 1865. And the amount of detail in this photo is really quite astonishing for an early camera. If we zoom in, it's like we're almost there. Drinking in the Black Bull Inn or buying tobacco from the tobacco and snuff manufactory. It can at times be difficult telling the age of buildings especially when extensive work has taken place to alter their appearance. And while there is still a pub called the Black Bull at this spot, I think it's probable that most buildings in the photo have gone, with the probable exception of the tall tenement on the far right, which is now part of the Beehive Inn.
through to Falkirk now, and this wonderful shot of a delivery horse and cart bristling with wooden crates and glass bottles belonging to Barr's aerated water factory. The photo dates to 1900 and was taken at the junction of Westbridge Street and Hope Street by the Gentleman Fountain. Robert Barr started making aerated waters, or soft drinks, in Falkirk in 1875. The firm expanded into Glasgow, and I think it's fair to say that we've all heard of Barr's Iron Brew. Sadly, the fountain was removed in 1923, and its whereabouts remain unknown. The church on the right, and other buildings in the photo, still exist today. Horses carted everything in the old days, in this case boxes of biscuits made by James Chapman, a baker and confectioner in Slamaran. The photo dates to 1920 and shows just one horse pulling quite a big load, but then I suppose biscuits are quite light. Back to Falkirk and a wonderful evocative image of crates of beer being unloaded from the back of a horse and cart at the Newmarket Bar in Newmarket Street sometime in the first half of the 20th century. The cart belongs to James Aitken and Company whose Falkirk brewery was not that far from the pub. Sadly, Aitken's brewery has gone but I'm delighted to say that the new market pub still stands today. Another horse and cart and another bar this time attached to the City Hotel near the top of Edinburgh's Coburn Street in 1882. You can clearly see window adverts for Usher's Pale Ale, Salt and Company's Pale Ale, Truman's famous London Stout and Dryborough's Edinburgh Ales. Although this building has in all probability gone, the frontage of the current Scotsman's Lounge Bar looks remarkably similar. Remaining in Edinburgh, but this time beside the King's Theatre in Leven Street. The photo dates to 1914 and shows R. Marshall's bar. The thing about this photo is that in addition to the King's Theatre, the bar still exists. And I can guarantee that if you walk in today, it will look pretty much as it did when this photo was taken. It is a very well-preserved pub interior, today under the name of Bennett's. An utterly fascinating image that may or may not be mildly familiar to folk who live in Edinburgh. It dates to around 1880, that quaint little building on the left still stands today and is known as Queen Mary's Bathhouse. It is a wonderful hobbit-like structure that probably served as a gatehouse of some sort 
probably in connection with Holyrood Palace, and dates to the 16th century. It is the only structure in this photo that survives. Everything else has gone and been replaced with modern housing. A great photo, made all the more complete by a horse and cart and a man up a ladder. Taken in 1854, this photo at the corner of Cowgate and St Mary's Wind, now St Mary's Street, in Edinburgh, clearly shows that parts of the city still looked medieval right up into the 19th century. There's lots of detail in the photo, like the hat factory and the horse and cart which is perhaps helping someone move house. A real glimpse of the past. Just another horse and cart, this time selling vegetables in the Bowness area around the beginning of the 20th century. Bringing food direct to your door was perhaps akin to today's online delivery companies. Who needs shops? Unloading what is probably coal from a puffer onto a horse and cart at Rossi Pier around 1930. An interesting one of Southbridge Street in Grangemouth in 1936. It's a scene that's changed beyond all recognition, with the Junction Dock, once called Upper Dock, on the right, being the only thing left. All the buildings have gone. There's a lot of detail here, from the clock tower and hotel on the left, to what looks like the Baltic Bar on the far right, and the two vessels in the dock, both named Glasgow. Glasgow's George Square in the 1890s. The city chambers, finished in 1889, still survives, and the scene looks much the same today, minus, of course, the horses and carts.
an old photo of Commercial Street in Leith in 1895. As well as a number of horses and carts, it shows a corner pub, Bertram's Wine and Spirits Emporium. Everything was an emporium in the old days. And the tall chimney of Todd's Mill. I believe all buildings shown in the photo have gone. Street in Stirling in 1926 and an excellent photo. It's sometimes difficult to tell, but I think all buildings shown here have gone. The carved stone bearing what looks like the date 1715 still exists and was presumably removed then replaced on the frontage of a more recent building as an acknowledgement of this previous structure. So much detail in this photo. Shop adverts for Lions Tea and Fry's Chocolate. Pub adverts for Tenants Lager Beer and All Sops Pale Ale. A lamppost sign saying, please do not spit. And the cannon, which is still in Broad Street today. The horses and carts were probably delivering coal, as empty folded sacks can be seen at the front of each cart. Red cart belonging to the Slamanan Cooperative Society in the 1920s. cart with what at first glance seems quite a load for just one horse. But the barrels are new and thankfully empty. Cowhide and Falkirk around 1910. A glimpse of the past, in this case a view of Causeway Side in Edinburgh in 1869. It's a scene of rustic charm that looks very different today. And I suppose the question is, what's in that huge cask? land in the lawn market near the top of Edinburgh's Royal Mile in 1912 
and sacks of coal are being delivered from a horse and cart. As an old gen, I remember coal being delivered in this way. These were strong men. They would swing a heavy sack of coal onto their backs and, in some cases, carry it up umpteen flights of stairs. Most of these buildings still exist today, with the exception of those on the left of the row. As I've said on countless occasions in this video, in the old days, horses and carts carried absolutely everything, from vegetables and biscuits, to coal and people, beer and lemonade, balloons for children wishing to trade in a jumper or two, refuse carts, barrels and even cars. In this final photo, the horses are pulling a fire engine, and the firemen of the Bonnie Bridge Foundry in the early 20th century. That's a lot of firemen for just one business, and very smart they look too. Well, that was part one in this new series, Old Photos of Scotland. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Burns, bye for now.